Good morning, everyone. June 9th, 2020, and welcome to episode number 20 of the Project 2020 show. And on day 20, we are now 1,225 subs on the channel. The growth continues to amaze me, and I thank everybody who has recently subscribed to the channel. I greatly appreciate it. And our goal still remains. Can we be at 1,600 or more subscribers by Monday morning? So if you really like Project 2020, or if you just like Project 2020, hit that subscribe button. Now, let's get back to episode number 20. So here we are, Tuesday morning, we just had Bob Gibson and Derek Jeter get released, and those cards are, as I said on Twitter, the reason why we play this game. Those are fantastic different interpretations of the cards. It's going to be very interesting to see how these two cards do pair together. Derek Jeter has a strong following, and Bob Gibson does not from a sales perspective. Is Gibson going to have a surge because of being attached to Jeter? I don't even know if you end up buying these two cards together. They're so different, and the players are so different from a collectible perspective. We'll find out. This is going to be very interesting to see the pre-orders tomorrow morning. But look, a lot to cover today. We're going to dive into pre-orders. I'm going to walk you through the projections for tomorrow morning. We're going to talk about the market. There is actually green on the market, so that is really good to see after Monday morning. So some positive news there. Uh, it's not all positive, but there is some positive news and then we're going to take a look at Gibson and in Derek Jeter uh, in general. But at first, I did want to sort of answer a question that has been uh, posed to me several times. And the main question is, why should I pay attention to this when Topps Living is basically the same thing in a sense, but nobody buys it and these cards are like pennies on a dollar? And I think it's very, very straightforward. Topps Living, think of the name. Tops Living, it's always going to be around. It surged at the beginning because it was different and it was cool, but it never dies. It just keeps going and people have lost a focus of it and they don't pay attention to it anymore. So that, and but when you think of Project 2020, there is a beginning, there is an end, and there's a middle. And right now we're at the beginning of this project and we're, we're trending towards the middle and then we're gonna get to the end, but we know after card 399 and 400, two days after that, there's no more Project 2020. There's nothing left to talk about other than sort of a, a post-mortem, what did we go through, what did we experience? So if you're if you're trying to correlate this to Project or to Tops Living, I would not do that. They're completely different. Tops Living is gonna go on forever and ever and ever. And I can tell you right now, to me, I have zero interest in Tops Living because it just, it just keeps going. But this Project 2020, this is going to end at the end of the year and then we have to move our focus to something else. So that is why I think and I believe that Project 2020 is not Tops Living because this has a direct endpoint and eventually there's not gonna be Project 2020 in 2021. So there we go. Now let's get to pre-orders and let's get to the market. Also, if you're thinking or asking where do all these graphics come from or the numbers, please check out the website, crtsportscards.com. Go to my Project 2020 page and it has everything there for you. Uh, and you can quickly reference any number that I talk about here at, uh, on the show. And yes, the music is back, but in a very limited way. I've decided to bring it back in three segments. So at the beginning, I brought it back right here and I'll bring it back again between the, the market update and then the player update. So I think yesterday's episode ended up being too quiet for me. So I was like, I need to add this back in. And the comments were were very positive towards adding the music back in. So I think it's it, it feels better, it flows better right now with the music in there. Also, I have uh, updated the website to improve user experience. I have moved the images of the player, so the entire player gallery and the artist gallery to separate pages. So that way mobile users or people on a slower connection, or just in general, I mean, the, the website now should run faster uh, because those images now are not being loaded on this page. And when you think about going to card 400, that page could be like a dial up page in the future. So all of those images are now on separate pages. They're, they're hyperlinked, of course, at the top in the navigation menu. So take a look at that and hopefully your user experience on the website is better. Now let's get to the market. So here's the first look at the week 12 pre data, and that's this is for the Nolan Ryan and of course the Doc Gooden that got released yesterday. And it's basically what I thought we would see from a number perspective and the gap perspective. So Nolan Ryan is at 137 after 24 hours. 
and then Dwight Gooden is at 60. There is a considerable difference on those two sales. And look, the cards are very different. Grotesque has always had a lower print run than sort of like than, than King Saladin in this sense. But where where do these numbers where are these numbers gonna land after 48 hours? And where do I think the print runs are gonna be on these two cards? And I said yesterday, look, both of these cards should be low. Even the grotesque should be really low, like three to four thousand. That's just not gonna happen. We're not in that environment anymore. So what I did to really try to dial in these ranges and look back and see what can I learn from the past, because there's a few things that I didn't, de I didn't dig deep enough with last week where I missed on a couple projections. And so I said, okay, let's forget the last Gooden and the last Ryan card. Both of those were the, were the, the Theo, not the Theo, but the Vids and then the Gooden. So are the, uh, the Ben Baller. So those were kind of out the window. Let's look back at another card. And so they actually had a very similar release. So Gooden came out at 65 and then Nolan Ryan came out at 67. Different days, but back to back. And and of course, look, this is the first time that we've had uh, two players from the same team on the same time or the same day in a sense. So there's going to be a little bit of a bump there just because if you're a Mets collector, now you're getting both instead of just buying one before. So on 65, which was Gooden, and 67, which was Ryan, Nolan Ryan sold 40% more than Doc Gooden. Now, different days, of course, but it, it gives us sort of a timeline or, or, or a range to think about how much or how much more Ryan will sell than Gooden. So when I looked at the projections, I used those numbers. I also looked at last their pre-orders last time, and the, the Ryans are more this time than they were last time, and the Goodens are going to be probably very similar. But now from a projection perspective, here's where I think they're going to land. So Nolan Ryan is going to be, in my opinion, 13 to 15,000. I think 15,000 is the high range on this card. And then Dwight Gooden is 8 to 11. You know, he, he could be very low, but he also, I think, there's going to be some natural bump with the Ryan here with Gooden to help him out. And there are a couple different things that I use to navigate to these ranges. And so, look, as I said a second ago, Ryan beat... Gooden by 40% is actually 46% uh, on the 67 to 65. But I also looked at eBay penetration, and I think on the Gooden and the Ryan, there's going to be a, a natural gap in the two. Look, people are going to buy the Nolan Ryan no matter what, and then now they're going to add the the Doc Gooden. So I'm thinking Gooden, we're going to see possibly around 1.25% eBay penetration, and then Nolan Ryan about 1.45. So there's a natural gap there. I'm not about to predict the eBay penetrations here, but I think when you look back at last week, actually the past two weeks, and you look at the gap differential of both cards, but then you factor in that these are two Mets of the same team. There's there's some difference here. So I think I'm, I'm I feel very confident with with 13 to 15 and then 8 to 11 on these cards just based on what we've seen in the past couple of weeks. Now let's look at the market and then we'll take a look at Bob Gibson and Derek Jeter. So here we are. Here's pricing for the first player card in Project 2020 history. And you are not seeing that incorrectly. There is green on that chart with Clemente. Clemente up 3% yesterday versus five-day trailing average. Also, Ted Williams only down 2.88%. Does this mean the market is stabilizing? It's too hard to say right now, but it's great to see those two numbers come in basically near zero, if not actually up just about a percentage point. And when you think back to yesterday, the best number I think was Mike Trout, just under 9% down. So really nice to see that those two numbers are improving and getting smaller. And again, Mike Trout was the third lowest uh, loss in a sense this week uh, as of yesterday. So we'll see how this works out today. But when you look at the market overall, from the market perspective of Project 2020, the pr average price point raised up. So we are at $98.55 yesterday. Now, volume did drop to under 1600 So that was interesting to see. But the average price point did, did increase to 98 We'll see if this continues. There was a $7,000 Mike Trout artist proof sale yesterday. So that's probably what's bringing that number up. But I'm not about to start disqualifying certain cards to get an average number. This is just what sold yesterday with Project 2020. Same with the graded cards. I'm going to leave them in there just because it's part of the economy now of Project 2020. There's no reason to take these out. So look, overall, pretty positive day up to $98. We'll see if that continues today. And also the top 20 cards, we'll see if, if a couple others stabilize today and we'll see what happens. But now let's get to Derek Jeter and Bob Gibson. Okay, first up is Bob Gibson. Look at that card. So much pink, so much neon pink in this card. There's so much detail. I even had time to look at the card in general. I just basically saved the image and started recording. So it's gonna be great to go back and look at the card and see what 
images or what things Gregory Sif put into this card. So very, very exciting to see this one. And you think of Gregory Sif overall. Look, he's his, this is his sixth card, and he went from George Brett to Nolan Ryan to Cal Ripken, Mattingly, and then Jeter. It, look, he's had a progression up in a sense, but his Mattingly and his Jeter, they're different, but they look very similar. I think his Ripken is probably the best card overall of his five so far. But he's gone from a low of 1,200, which was his George Brett, all the way to a very high number of 48,000 with Derek Jeter. Where is this card going to land? It's hard to say. But when you look at Gibson overall, I mean, he has sold 25,000 copies so far. I mean, between his Grotesque, his Chang, Keith Shore, look, all those were under 2,000 copies sold. His Beck was at 6,700, and then his Ermsey, which was in the top 10 uh, at one time at 14,867. But from a, from a rank perspective, he is 18th overall, and then his best card is going to be number 80 for that Ermsey at 22nd. So where do we think this card's going to land? It's really hard to say right now. It's really going to be curious to see where the pre-orders land. Could it be in that sweet spot ring, 10 to 15,000 right now? It's hard to say. We'll look at the pre-orders tomorrow. But now let's look at the big card of the day. Let's look at Derek Jeter. What I want to say with this card is look at the kid, but then that's offensive to Ken Griffey Jr. But but look at Derek Jeter and his young self in his uh, Ermsey design. There's so many cool things about this card, but I just think I just call him, look at it, he's a kid. But when you think back to his rookie card, he was a kid in that photo. So it makes sense with this card. But when you look at, at Ermsey overall, this is, of course, again, his sixth card coming out. He just had the Bob Gibson, which was the card from this morning. So very interesting correlation there. But look, Mike Trout, we all know that card very well. We got Ichiro, Dwight Gooden, Ted Williams, and, of course, the Bob Gibson. So his progression has been interesting for, to this date. I mean, of course, his Mike Trout back then sold nearly 3,000 copies. We're like, oh, my gosh, the sky is falling. We sold 3,000 copies now. That card is nearly $1,000. Then Ichiro, Dwight Gooden, basically the same. Williams spiked a little bit. And then, of course, the Gibson at 15,000, which was in the top 10 just a second ago. So he's had an up and down career so far. But at one time, we thought 3,000 copies were, uh, was a ton of copies. That's now, uh, it's peanuts now. But when you look at Jeter overall, this is, again, his sixth card. We just had him with Sif. And it's really funny how these sort of things tie in together because of Sif having the other card this morning. But look, Saladin 9900, we're we're tracking that one on the sales projective because that a projection because that was this is his first card. Then we have Matt Taylor, Grotesque at 65, we have the Thiel at 20,000 and then Sif, you know, at 48,000. I mean, he sold nearly 100,000 copies, 95,000 to be exact. He is the third best artist right now, and then his best card is number 93, which is at Sif at fourth overall you know where does this card land does he make it in the top five top six i think it's a pretty safe bet that he's going to be up there but how high is he going to be up there it's going to be hard to say there's a lot of uh, frustration around the market there's going to be a lot of people maybe not buying these just because of, of what has happened over the past few weeks i'm not going to make any sort of prediction right now but it wouldn't surprise me to see him in the top 10 also it wouldn't surprise me to see him fall outside the top 10 so there we have it. A day after two cards were released that were super similar and from the same team, we now have two cards released that are absolutely polar opposites that I do not think will sell well together. But we will find out. It'll be very curious to see where the pre-orders land tomorrow morning. And with that, have a fantastic Tuesday, and I'll see you back tomorrow morning for episode number 21.